news and the Hey, what's up, YouTube? It's Richie from Boston. It is the 21st of May in the year 2020, or at least that's what they want us to believe. And hopefully, if the creek don't rise in the good Lord's will, and this is going to be a weekly thing that Dr. Kaufman's agreed to do for the benefit of all you guys watching. There's no, there's no, there's no uh, monetary incentive, anything like this. He's just doing this out of the kindness of his heart. And he's just been a solid guy throughout this entire event we're living through. So everyone's already sent in most of their questions. We'll do this again next week if it's if it's humanly possible. But Dr. Kaufman, thank you once again joining me, taking time out of your life and going through all these questions because I know there's a lot of them. Yeah, well, it's, uh, I'm glad to have this opportunity, Richie. I mean, uh, this is all really for me about helping the people and giving information. So it's really a great opportunity. Yep, no worries, no worries at all. Um, DJ Testa, I, I forwarded your email to the doctor about your son. He's gonna take a look at that after the uh, after we're done. So, doctor, you wanna lead this off? I already sent these to you. Go through them and the, you know, whatever you think. There was a lot of them that were just wacky things. Like I got chapped lips, it's like, yeah, don't, <laughs> you know, let, let's stick with the stuff that's, that's legit. And, and before before we start, real quick, because this was going through the comment section, which is what caught my eye. I just, just discovered, and I didn't realize this was a thing, that the Royal Rife machine is actually available. You can buy one. And you were telling me there's kind of a uh, catch-22 or a caveat to that. You want to just jump on that real quick? Yeah, sure. Um, you know, Royal Rife had a really extraordinary method of uh, treating illness, and um, a lot of people know about it for cancer, but actually there were a lot of other illnesses that he had very good success with. But uh, the way that he did this, and this machine basically delivers like a radio waves of a, of a specified frequency to the ill person as a therapeutic uh, maneuver. And, uh, but the way that he discovered, or for each individual patient and for their particular illness, what frequency to uh, tune the machine to was by this uh, amazing microscope that he invented that uh, was more powerful than anything that existed at the time and was a, a, a light microscope, not an electron microscope, but could see particles almost as small. And he would use that to basically observe the vibrational frequency of the disease. So he would, for example, look at a blood uh, specimen under the microscope and uh, using some kind of technology, I'm not sure what, he would actually determine the specific frequency that he saw um, the somatids vibrating at, and then he would tune the therapeutic device to that frequency, and that would result in the outcome. But unfortunately, his laboratory was raided and that microscope was destroyed along with the other technology used for that purpose and it has never been uh, recreated since that time so there's no current way to figure out the right frequency to deliver the therapy with the right machine so it still is possible to get success but um, it's really uh, kind of a blind uh, strategy in a way well it's funny because I've been down to uh, the Coral Castle in Florida a couple of times and there's a guy named Ed Leeds Skelhagen that built this thing mm -hmm. and no one's ever seen how this guy did this, but he was a small guy. He was about five foot tall, very small stature. He came from Europe, I believe, and he used allegedly the same technology they used to build the pyramids by levitating, by misplacing, misplacing particles and causing stones to lift up and put in place. If you've never been there, I have, I've done video of it. There's stones the size of my house that this guy moved and put in place but the main thing there is a free energy machine. He made this machine that was just a perpetual energy machine. It just worked and worked and it's on display. And oddly enough, when I was there, there was an engineer there kind of slyly trying to get a diagram of it while I watched out to make sure nobody snuck up on him. And much like the Rife machine, there's enough there to see what it is, but all the pieces aren't there so you can't yeah. actually use it. It's the story of our lives. All the technology that would actually really benefit humanity, it's still there. You just don't know how to use it. So I've seen this before. Yeah, it's it's happened quite quite a number of times. Even in modern times, uh, there have been a lot of people who, for example, invented uh, technology to make a car go 100 or 150 miles per gallon. And um, they, you know, something happens like uh, one of the oil companies buys it out from under them and then buries it or 
uh, you know, the government uh, takes it takes it away or something like that. Somebody makes them a deal, and uh, there have been several times that things like that have happened. Yep, we were just talking about that in the chat previously to the the guy that made the water powered car, and the Saudi Arabians literally offered him a billion dollar deal back in the eighties, and he said no. The last thing out of this guy's mouth was they poisoned me, and then he mysteriously died, and then all the technology disappeared. Right, of course. I, I mean, just, just real quick, I, I, I know this isn't exactly your field, but do you think that car was running on the water or the hydrogen in the water? Well, I don't, I don't really know about that technology, to be honest with okay. you, but I, I do know that water is capable of a lot more than we currently understand. Right. I mean, just in the last several years, there's been um, a major breakthroughs in the understanding of water, like understanding about structured or easy water. And um, there's much more that we have to learn about water to fully understand it. So I wouldn't be surprised if there's a way to use water actually to operate a vehicle. I agree. I agree. Yeah, they got that. All right. Um, you want to jump into the first question? I forwarded them to you. Is hey man, this information is out there. You know, they got that over there in Brazil. They got cars running in on, on corn. So they got the technology, but he saw the devil. He's the devil, man. He's the damn devil. That's why. That's why he's doing what he's doing, man. As, as you see them relevant, if the doctor can't get to your questions today, it is what it is, all right? He's doing this on his own dime, so let's, let's cut him some slack. All right, well, the, the two first questions are kind of related, so I'm going to read those together. Uh, the first one is from Pablo, who says, uh, Dr. Cowan mentioned Spanish flu experiments where they injected body excretions from sick into healthy, and they do not get sick. What's Andrew's take on this, and does he have any reference he could share? And then I'm going to add the question from Alexandra in there. I was wondering what are Dr. Cowan's thoughts on the Spanish flu pandemic? I'm curious. Thanks for all you do. Well, first, let me thank you, Alexandra and Pablo, for those excellent questions. So I'll talk first about the contagion experiments, and those were uh, real experiments done by the United States Public Health Service or under their authority, actually carried out uh, near you, Richie, in Boston. And uh, that they were done at the time of the Spanish flu epidemic. And I sent uh, Richie actually a, a paper on that, which uh, he can make available. And then also this is discussed in the book um, the Invisible Rainbow by Arthur Furstenberg. So I would def that's a, an excellent book. I would encourage you to check that out. But basically what happened is that they took a group of people who were sick with the Spanish flu and they had them uh, collected body fluids from them. Like they had them cough up some junk. They had, uh, you know, wiped stuff out of their nose and even took uh, swabs of their eyeballs. And they mixed these secretions up. And they did three experiments where they tried to get 100 healthy volunteers sick from these secretions. And uh, the first one they did, um, I think they put it right into the throat, uh, the nose and the eyes of the subjects, and not one of the people got sick. Then they tried injecting it in the recipients, and none of them got sick. And then the third time, they had them get really close to each other, like they were in intimate conversation, but like uncomfortably close, like. And then they had uh, one of them blow out and the other one inhale the exhalation of the first person, like at really close distance, like almost kissing. And they had them do that several times. And once again, no one got sick. So these experiments were really kind of a failure in a sense because they didn't prove how the Spanish flu or if it was contagious. Um, but uh, they, they definitely disproved any theory that body secretions had an infectious agent that would uh, pass on this disease. And I'll tell you, there were many other factors about the Spanish flu that argued against any contagion. So uh, one of those things was the rapidity with which people around the world got sick in different places, because that was at a time when there was no air travel. So people had to travel by boat across, uh, you know, the oceans. And it popped up in places too close in time to be explained by travelers uh, bringing it from foreign lands. Um, there, the other thing that argues against um, contagion is that the symptoms of the Spanish flu are quite heterogeneous and different groups and different populations had different constellation of symptoms. So 
that really argues pretty strongly that it was not one illness, that it was a, a mixture of different um, illnesses. So uh, a lot of this was related to World War I because World War I was fought for the four years right leading up to the pandemic. And there was already a lot of illness going on and it may have actually started before 1918. But one of the factors related to uh, the soldiers was uh, that they received a large number of vaccines. And interestingly, they received vaccines for things like typhoid fever, which were experimental. Uh, but yet there was a high rate of infection with typhoid fever among the soldiers. So it kind of demonstrated that the vaccines weren't effective. And there were several uh, cases of people getting ill right after a vaccine was administered. So that may have been one major factor that uh, was responsible for a lot of the illness. And also they really encouraged people who were healthy to get these vaccines at the time uh, because it was you know, some kind of protection from the Spanish flu was the strategy. Uh, but there were many other things like uh, one other thing that of interest is that they were treating influenza at the time with aspirin and a pretty high doses of aspirin. And this uh, has been shown to cause a lot of respiratory problems. So actually it can make it like a, a pneumonia and uh, people can get sick from that. So that may have caused some of the cases. Uh, another interesting characteristic about the Spanish flu is that there were many people who fell ill suddenly and died within hours. And they demonstrated unusual things like they had uh, blood in their uh, lung secretion. So they were coughing up blood um, and there was a lot of hemorrhaging and uh, that had never been seen with any you know seasonal flu uh, before so there were many things that uh, signaled that this wasn't related to a seasonal flu it was something very very different so hopefully that covers um, enough information about the spanish flu pandemic but i know there's a lot of propaganda about it and in fact um, my son had a school assignment where he was supposed to like write a journal article about his experience where you know with everything being different in the pandemic but they gave him a slideshow about uh the you know 1918 spanish flu and it seemed to stress those issues that there was poor evidence for like contagion um they talked about wearing masks um and uh you know some and that it was caused by a virus even though that's never been proved and interestingly at the time of the uh, spanish flu they thought it was caused by a bacteria um, and they even did some, uh, had some treatments related to that bacteria that they had tested and even deployed. I think they had a, but it wasn't successful at the time. So it's interesting how, how things change about the story over time. Now, when they thought it was caused by a bacteria, is that the same thing that uh, David Parker and Don Lester equate to seeing firemen around a burning house and thinking the firemen were responsible for the fire? Is that, yeah. the same, is that the same analogy? Yeah, well, that's the whole reason why bacteria got implicated in disease in the first place, because they would have a sick person and take tissue from the, you know, that was affected by their illness and then look at it under a microscope and see bacteria present. And they just assumed that the bacteria played a, a causative role in the disease rather than, you know, having an open mind and saying, oh, what are the bacteria doing there? Uh, because the, the true role of the bacteria is much more akin to the fire. Uh, that they're they're helping to put the fire out and clean things up, um, not not causing the disease in the first place. So, I mean, this is this is way back then when tel when telescopes when microscopes were only as powerful enough where they could only see bacteria. They based it on their best knowledge available at the time. In your opinion, the crisis that we're living through right now, the people that are in charge, they damn well know that this is a hoax. I mean, it's been clicking for almost six months now, and there is still yet to be a pandemic. Unless, of course, you watch the mainstream news. Mainstream news, everything is horribly wrong. But other than that, everything's fine. I mean, these guys are well aware that they're pulling this off. I mean, would you agree, or am I, am I wrong? Say it. Well, the people pulling it off are certainly aware. Yeah. I mean, anyone who's uh, of a mind to consider that possibility would have to realize it pretty quickly during the Spanish flu, and I've seen a couple of interviews uh, with survivors. You know, they described basically there were so many dead bodies that they were just overwhelmed and they had to bury them in people's backyards because the cemeteries were all full, right? And that's what they experienced. Uh, 
you know, that's what a pandemic is. But if you ask people today, nobody's had that experience. Not one body has had to be buried outside of normal funeral home. Well, they tried to push the, it, look, look at the island in New York. They neglected to tell people that that island's been used for burial for time immemorial, literally. And they also neglected to tell them that they cut the, uh, the, the time in half to claim a body. Originally it was 30 days, but during the crisis, they dropped it down to 15. You know what I mean? So they, they, yeah. the, there's no context to the information they're putting out. Because why bother? Who cares? It's Americans. Well, you know, this is, most of these things are like public uh, publicity stunts. Oh, no, no, no doubt. So um, one, one question. Somebody, I had it up there for a minute. Um, is there anything, like the one that comes up the most is herpes. <laughs> Is that, I mean, is that, would, would you say, is there anything that's actually a con contagion, a true contagion? No, absolutely not. And, um, well, I, I mean, you say with herpes or in general? No, I'm just, with herpes, but in general, yeah. Right. I mean, you know, you can pass the cooties from one person to another. Right, right. So, but um, no, herpes is very misunderstood. And, um, you know, it's not related to a virus. If you... If you look at the what the medical community says about it, though, is they basically say that over 90% of the population is, has a positive herpes test. Okay, so that means almost everybody has the virus if there, if there really is one. And so why do only a few people get herpes outbreaks if everybody has this virus in them? You know, that, that's one thing that doesn't really make sense. But all it couldn't be sexually transmitted if it's in over 90% of the population because that would mean that 9 out of 10 people have to have sex with each other. Uh -huh. Right? And so when there's sexual transmission, there's a, a clearly a mathematical progression that you can see that, uh, that gives you a good indication that that's what it is and it doesn't fit uh, at all for herpes and for many other things like HIV as well. And uh, so you have the situation where you basically have this test, which is really meaningless, but we're saying, you know, we're told that this is a test for the virus and that this disease is caused by a virus. But actually what really causes uh, herpes outbreaks is a weakness in the skin, uh, which is usually related to a deficiency in collagen. Um, collagen deficiency is extremely common in our culture because we don't um, eat the parts of the meat anymore that contain the collagen, the connective tissue, like the feet and the ears and the, the knees, uh, like the ham hocks, for example. Um, but that's what the trend in bone broth that began a few years ago was really about. It was a way uh, for us to get collagen back into the diet. And your body can make its own collagen, but it has a really hard time keeping up with the full demand. And if you put excess stress on your body like you're an athlete for example or you're a vegan and you don't eat quite the right foods then you can't body can't make as much so you get into this situation where you just don't have quite enough and it can cause a number of different problems like think about all of the connective tissue in your body can be affected so like skin hair and nails um, on the surface and then your bones and bone healing even issues with your teeth and gums um, it can even affect your intestines uh, because all, all these materials are all made uh, of a collagen uh, structure. So when that's weak and you have excess toxins and, and outbreaks, you'll know that they might be associated with a number of conditions, like they might be related to stress or they might be uh, related to eating junk food or things like that. And basically something that liberates toxins in your body. And since your skin is weak, your body basically erupts the toxins out through the skin. And so normally, if you do a little bit of detox and uh, fortify yourself with collagen, you can stop having any further outbreaks. Detoxing your body. Detoxing your body is important, man. Spiritually and physically, man. Because we're physicians, man. We're supposed to know these things, you know? You gotta take care of your body, you gotta take care of yourself, man. Your call is the energy source, you know. Check out this comment, doctor. Is that is that accurate, you think? You cannot cure a virus ever. A virus lays dormant in the vag vagus nerve. Once it replicates with your RNA, you will never rid the body of it. Is that accurate or well uh, my understanding is that there's really not any evidence uh, that a virus the way it explains exists. 
So in other words, that something comes from the outside that has genetic material and multiplies in our cells as some kind of parasite. Like, I haven't really found any evidence that that exists at all. Guy, I was just about to answer this comment. This happens all the time, this particular one, and I actually think I already know the answer to this. So I'm confused now. How do people catch the flu or cold if viruses aren't airborne? It's basically, I mean, that it's worse. It's the coldest out. When the days are the shortest, the least amount of sunlight, et cetera, et cetera, and most people eat prepared foods, foods that come in a box, you know, chocolate flavored chemicals, magnetic cereal, et cetera. Your body's an amazing device and it self regulates, and being sick is part of that. It's just a natural thing that happens. The less garbage you eat, the less you get sick. I haven't been sick in years. I'm probably going to get sick now that I said that, but I mean, I don't drink fluoride. I make, you know, I don't drink anything out of a bottle because everything has fluoride in it now. And I try not to eat anything that comes out of a box. So I don't get sick very often. Well, likewise, I hardly get sick either. First and foremost, prayer. Taking your herbs, your black seed oil, your oregano oil, your apple cider vinegar, your, your lemons. I hardly get sick, man. I hardly get sick, man. Got built up your immune system. Don't put your trust in an Egypt, man. I want you to put trust in Egypt, man. Take care of your body, man. Use this wisdom. Apply this wisdom. You're halfway there. I mean, those are two uh, very good rules. And, you know, it's funny that people say, well, how do you catch a cold or catch the flu? Well, what's the proof that you catch those things? You know, if you look at traditional uh, Chinese medicine and Indian medicine, which is called Ayurvedic medicine, they had no concept of contagion in those cultures. And they observed the same exact phenomena that we did, that people have seasonal colds and other seasonal illnesses. And, you know, the way I look at this is our body works in cycles and the cycle and right we know we have our sleep wake cycle which is time to the to the sun the light cycles and we have seasonal cycles as well and so our upper airway uh detoxifies itself in the cold season and uh we're more likely to do that if we're exposed to more toxins like we're talking about but we're all exposed to them and you know every piece of air pollution that we breathe comes in through our nose and mouth and it gets filtered out into those tissues and that stuff builds up over a year. It says nose and mouth. What are people doing now? They're covering their faces now. They tell you to cover your face. Cover your face, man. What your body breathes in and then breathes out those toxins. So what you're doing is you're breathing it back in. So a lot more people are gonna get sick, man. Even doctors and nurses, when they come out the medical rooms, they take off the mask. They don't have the mask on all day. There it is, you got assholes out here walking around with the mask all day on, man. Stupid, man. So there's like a biological cycle that we purge it in the winter. And when we're around other people going through that cycle, there may be some empathic mechanism that alerts the other people in their proximity that, oh, to, you know, start that biological program. But you know that it's not anywhere near 100 percent. You know, that's one of the, the real uh, kickers about this contagion theory is that um, right now, like we're told that this is so contagious that we can't even go near people. Right. But what about all the healthcare workers that are in proximity to these people day in and day out, that they're all sick? Yeah, the only the only thing I'm hearing from healthcare workers at all, and I speak to a lot of them, is they're losing their job. That's yeah. it. And they're losing exactly. their jobs in incredibly shady ways. Not like, hey, listen, we the, due to the current crisis, we have to lay you off. They're looking. They're they're making up new rules to go along with this new paradigm and then firing people that have been there for 20 years. I well, mean, you know, that recently happened to a woman that I dated for a long time. I mean, out of the blue, out of the blue, textbook worker lost her job because they, you know, they moved around the shells and she picked the wrong one. A terrible analogy, but whatever. Well, no, it sounds like they might be trying to get rid of the highest paid uh, staff. So that because, you know, they're, they're really just scrambling to stay in business. And, um, you know, uh, don't treat people well in, in my experience. So that's not surprising, but I wouldn't be, you know, everything always comes down to And so if they find someone's been there for 20 years, they're probably they want new people in too. They don't want, because I'm sure lots of people are thinking in the new way, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, so, you're right. 
new graduates, people naive that haven't uh, been around the block. Crazy. All right, well, that was, you want to jump on to the next question? Yeah, please. Okay. So um, here, this one is from Wendy Muenchow. Hopefully I said that right. Uh, can you ask Dr. Kaufman about things like shingles virus? I've listened to all your videos with him and others, and I completely agree it's all a farce. But I'm wondering what he thinks causes something like that. Bacteria, allergy, something else. So maybe I can answer this question a little bit more generally because I know it's it's really hard that we've been taught this uh, germ theory based uh, uh, you know th uh, disease um, kind of material since we were real young you know and mom said uh, cover your mouth when you cough you know don't go around your sister she'll get you sick so it's so ingrained in us that it's hard to you know conceive um, of of something else. But, you know, it's important to, to just know that um, it's never been proven that there's a virus that causes any of these diseases. So let me just tell you in general what are the real, uh, to the way I see things. So there are really four main causes and up to, by far, and this affects almost everyone who comes to me for consultation, is um, toxic substances, number one, and malnutrition, number two. So malnutrition, for example, can be like the collagen deficiency that I just spoke of, but it can uh, be in almost any area. Uh, then number three would be psychological shock, uh, which can cause both psychological and physical illness. Um, number four is electromagnetic and ionizing radiation. And then the fifth one, which is very, very minor, is uh, genetic uh, illness, but that is actually usually caused by exposure to toxins or malnutrition. Um, and usually can be treated by environmental uh, changes, uh, but it, it does affect uh, a very small number of people. So really that covers all disease, so shingles would have to be uh, one of those. Uh, That's why Jake gets so sick in the hood. Jake gets so sick in the hood, man, because the environment is literally unhealthy. Being in poverty, being in the hood, it's, it's unhealthy, man. It's not healthy for you. That's not what the Lord intended, it's how he intended us to live. It's a sickness, man. It's an illness. That's why Jake is jacked up. The congestion, the air is polluted. The pollution from the cars. The poverty. Mix that in with poverty. That's why Jake is so sick. Uh, one of those options. And it does seem to affect the nervous system, um, shingles. But, you know, what they say it causes shingles and the vaccine for chicken pox and shingles doesn't really sense. So, um, I think it most likely it's related to a toxin. Somebody just asked a question. Are you working on a paper with Cal Washington? Did I say that right? Yeah, uh, you did say it right. Um, so yeah, Cal Washington is uh, part of this um, organization called In Power, and their website is inpowermovement.com. And uh, I did a little bit of consulting to help with the, some of the scientific aspects, but mostly they have been the brilliant uh, minds that came up with this incredible document called the Notice of Liability. And this is uh, one legal strategy that I think is a pretty solid one that will uh, help you avoid getting a vaccine. And they also have one for 5G that, that they're working on. That's I, I don't know if that one is available right now yet, but it will be in the near future. So there you have the website, Richie, and you can go on there and they have uh, done some recent webinars where they explain the process. And um, the membership uh, is very affordable, which gives you access to all the documents and uh, all their support. So if that's something that's important to you, I would definitely recommend um, uh, investigating their strategy. It's, it's a very solid one and I definitely support it. What did you think when you saw Dershowitz up there telling everybody mm -hmm. the government has every right in the world to inject you. There's just nothing you can do about it. People were emailing me left and right, and I'm like, I'm not surprised. I'm not. That's I, I. I didn't even have to hear him say anything to know that's what he was going to say. That's the entire end game here. That's what all this is all about, man. Well, it's so interesting how Dershowitz has sort of uh, changed his role in the public eye so severely over the years. I thought he was I, dead. <laughs> he did. <laughs> <clears throat> maybe it's a, maybe it's an imposter. Could be, but uh, nonetheless, you know, I think they are trying to change the the legal theory that governs our nation, 
from one of uh, you know individual responsibility and um, uh, police power to govern safety over to one that it's like the community is more important than the individual and his arguments were based on that theory that basically we have to get it because we'll endanger other people if we don't and really that goes against uh, medical science um, it goes against common sense because oh, I'm so glad I was just going to say, go ahead. I was going to say, yeah. Well, I mean, if the vaccine protects you, then what do you have to worry about what anybody else is? Doing? You know, right. the risk would be on them. Right. Wouldn't it theoretically, if all things were accurate, fifty percent has the vaccine, fifty percent doesn't, everyone would be all right. I mean, it has to be a hundred percent saturation. It makes no sense. Whatever happens, well, to level the fittest. Listen, this whole idea of herd immunity is really a bunch of uh, BS, to be honest with you. And first of all, it's calling us herd animals, right? Basically, we're cattle. We are in their control. We can be manipulated. And I think that's a big... That's cool, yeah. But yeah, yeah, I yeah. think that's yeah. I think that's a big part of what the term really refers to. Oh, yeah. But what it you know, it's purely theoretical, and you know, I don't really know how it even makes sense. But what it says is basically, if a certain threshold of the population is immune to a certain you know uh, communicable illness, which they don't exist anyway, um, then everybody will be immune, or the illness can't uh, manifest itself. Right, but the, but they they usually quote numbers around ninety percent or higher, and we've never ever had a population anywhere close to that. Yet they've said that sort of some diseases have been eradicated because of herd immunity. So so and the reason we haven't had that is because, like let's say for measles for example, the uh, so-called immunity from a measles vaccine wears off in five to ten years. So only children get this vaccine. So that means virtually all adults are not immune, not immune to measles, right? And children only make up a very small percentage of the population, something like 15%. So if we have only 15% of the population is immune, but yet we don't have uh, real significant outbreaks and people say we've achieved herd immunity, then obviously it's completely bogus because we have nowhere near the percent they say is required to achieve that. So anytime I hear, um, you know, the term herd immunity, I just kind of turn off my my listening, <laughs> to be honest with you. It's it's sometimes you have to because you can't argue with everyone all the time. I mean, from when I first spoke to you way back in the old days till now, can you believe that this is still moving forward in the I mean, it's still moving forward. They shut down the world. And people don't even seem to understand the economic consequences that are still coming. The Federal Reserve is simply holding everything up. Everything seems to be fine, but it's going to come crashing down. It has to. Yeah, well, you know that the value of the dollar is, uh, is, yep. is artificially uh, propped up right now. You know, and because of the stimulus money that has gone to provide aid to the big corporations, they've been able to maintain the stock market you know, at its current level, but uh, it can't sustain because, you know, people are not consuming, the economy's not moving. So, you know, I think that we're going to see some really significant inflation, and I think the stock market is going to be really hurting um, in the coming months. Sometimes I'm just surprised it's taking so long to see the changes. Right. Well, they got, I mean, this is, this, this, this entire thing was orchestrated a long time ago. And the scriptures say, though it tarry away for it, for it shall surely come. I'm surprised too the shit hasn't collapsed, man. I'm really surprised. But we in the most highest time. The days are speeding up though, man. You know? I'm surprised it hasn't collapsed yet, but when you look at what's going on, hey man, we almost in June. Halfway done with the year, man. So we in the most highest time. They're playing it out. They're playing it out perfectly, in my opinion. It's it I can't they have to be stunned how little resistance they got how many people completely bought this hook line and sinker it's a paid vacation i get a 1200 hundred dollar check i'd be pissed if they sent me a 1200 hundred dollar check <laughs> you know I, I don't know i mean i don't know you can't just that not, not in new york not in boston 1200 dollars ain't gonna do anything for you it's just annoying but yeah you know, I, I definitely don't want their money i don't either not at all you uh you want to move on to the next one yeah let's do that all okay, right. so this one comes from uh, Iggy from South Africa, and this is kind of an interesting question. So I might have to summarize a little bit because it was too long to, to read on the air. But 
But here goes. So what if Bill Gates is playing the 50-50 game with the whole world? He wants us to think that it's the mark of the beast, and here comes the perfect reverse psychology. It most definitely is. Those who take the vaccine will survive the real pandemic, but at the cost of their souls. Diabolically ingenious plan, good riddance to the true believers, because sadly many Christians will take it, and then some. Now my question to Dr. Kaufman is, if this is correct, what out there can they use? Um, I don't think that the vaccine can really save us from anything because um, vaccines have never been proven to prevent disease. And uh, as you, uh, I think, can see, my, my position is that uh, there's no virus that has been shown to cause disease. Now, they definitely can use the vaccine to cause disease, for sure. Um, they simply include toxic materials and, you know, anything that enters us through an injection is much more toxic than if it gets, uh, than if we eat it. Uh. You hear what he said? Anything that gets injected. That's why in the law, the scriptures tell you not to cut into the flesh. You know, that's why the most high created a, a, a digestive system. So when you take these injections, it's going to be even do more, more damage, man. You're not supposed to cut into your flesh, man. These vaccines, man. Bypassing your digestive system. This is why the Most High created the digestive system. But this man want to be God, man. Causing all types of hell and damage in his mission. Being the devil. Yeah. So this is definitely a way they could deliver a lot of things from your health. But I think if uh, you know, the powers of empire wanted to cause a real epidemic, they would simply um, expose us to some kind of poisonous material. And I think this would be very easy to do, and it could be done in a number of ways. It can be done through the water supply, right? Like, look at what happened um, in Michigan with the lead uh, pipes, right. right? It could happen through um, the geoengineering chemtrails from the sky. They could uh, drop down something particularly toxic, fly at a lower altitude, so it's more likely to uh, be breathed in, right? There's many, many things that they could uh, do. They could have sanitation trucks come around and spray chemicals, right, which they do from time to time. They say they spray things for mosquitoes, and, um, you know, they used, I used to live near a big landfill in Staten Island, and they would spray, like, pine salt on the streets in the summer so you wouldn't smell the garbage as much when it was really hot. So, you know, there are many ways they could deploy uh, some kind of poison to make a lot of people sick. Yep. That's, what, what, that's what worried me, is that when they do the second wave, in order to reinforce it, I can just simply imagine them hitting a small town with anthrax or something to that effect and just killing everybody. That would be more than enough to completely get everybody back into the into line again. Yep. Yeah. You know? And then point to all the naysayers. See, we told you there was a disease. Look at this. This whole town, even the plants died. Right, right, you know what I mean? Right. I can see them saying that, and it would work, as ridiculous as that sounds. Yeah. No, no. I mean, that would be funny if the plants died. I mean, we know that papayas can get coronavirus, so maybe that would make sense. Isn't that amazing? And then the mainstream calls him out, and, and Americans are like, that stupid president of Kenya. You know, it's amazing how when other... Quote unquote elected officials call somebody out and actually provide proof like, oh, they've got a, they can cause bad weather. They have an earthquake machine. A princess in Japan talked about the earthquake machine. They were supposed to sign an earthquake directly under Fukushima. I mean, it's dead nut center under Fukushima after the tsunami. It should be that big of a leap of faith to say that there's an earthquake machine because we know that we create earthquakes with fracking. So if we could do it with fracking, we could, you know. Well, I, I know that. Do it. Oh no, they, they have like, uh, you know, the things you use to, for looking for coins, metal detectors and whatnot, yeah. small setups like that. And even with that small little transmitter, they can create a local quake, just a small. Yeah. But imagine having a larger one, like, you know, the size of a, I don't know, harp or, or a, one of the dozens of floating devices they have now, because they're everywhere. Right. Well, the, uh, the Starlink. They have real science. They know the real science. Well, Richie, you know the uh, Starlink satellites that they started launching on Passover? Yeah. Right? So that's, uh, you know, we don't really know what's in those. 
and uh, could there be some kind of weapon that could be deployed against us in those? Well, we, my, myself and another YouTuber, Mike Decker, we saw this Starlink. We saw it go over once in Wyoming, and then a week later, again. Mm -hmm. Andrew, they're, they're massive. They're from horizon to horizon. We sat there for 35 minutes watching this thing go over. And since we've seen it, he's launched more. And then Bill Gates also has a very similar setup, except this thing's gonna, it's gonna monitor every square inch on Earth with cameras from the sky. Well, that's what they say they are, but who knows what they are? Right. Who, in the, I mean, who knows what they are? Because everything they tell us is a complete and total lie. It's just amazing, man. But yeah, you're, you're on it. Me and uh, Days of Noah were talking about that exact topic the other day. Who knows what it is? So, all right, um, uh, the super duper, I know. President Donald Trump was talking about the super duper missile. Man, we don't have time to get to that right now, but all right, what do you got next? Um, next, we have Clive from Ireland. All right, Clive writes, uh, thanks for all that you do. I want to ask Dr. Kaufman, when you can't seem to shake a strep throat and you try to fight it yourself, but just get sicker and sicker until you go to the doctor and they give you an antibiotic. How is it only then it clears up within a day or so? All right, this is a, this is a good question, Clive. And uh, so I'm gonna explain how an illness like strep, th work, sorry, strep throat would work according to terrain theory, which basically says that it's the environment of the body that, where the disease is and not, not the germ. So according to that, strep throat would be that there was some insult that damaged the tissues in your throat. And in my experience, that's often related to eating dairy, especially pasteurized dairy, but there could be other sources as well. So there's some toxin, perhaps in the dairy or another source, that causes some damage to the throat, the oropharynx. And that damage is then done, and that's called the acute phase of the illness. And you, you normally don't have noticeable symptoms uh, during the acute phase, although you could have some very mild symptoms just like, uh, you know, fatigue or a little tingling or a twitch in the throat, perhaps something like that. And then what happens is once the damage is done, um, the body summons like the repair team to come in there and uh, clean up the mess, decompose the damaged tissue and, um, you know, rebuild. And that involves the immune system and involves uh, bacteria. And actually the bacteria and fungi, they actually come from inside our body. They bud out of our own cells, like uh, for example, out of our red blood cells. And they differentiate into just the right kind of species to come and clean up that area. And for our throat, that often happens to be streptococcus, uh, which is you know something that normally lives in our body, whether we're healthy or ill. So it calls the immune system and the streptococcus to come to the throat to start decomposing the dead and, and damaged tissue and um, getting rid of the junk. And in doing that, it causes the symptoms. So both the immune system and the bacteria secrete uh, various chemicals that cause like um, swelling of local tissue. So they dilate the little blood vessels and allow more fluid to come in to bring more nutrients for repair. And they create secretions to drain away the dead debris and decomposing um, parts uh, to get out of the body. So that would be, you know, like the pus and other secretions that irritate your skin and make you uncomfortable and drip down your throat and cause all the symptoms. So if this process goes to completion and the bacteria can finish up their job of cleaning up the mess, then you uh, get better and your tissue in that area is fully renewed. Now there could be a variety of things that impede that process and make it last longer. And maybe that's what happened with you, Clive. And that could be related to malnutrition, for example. Or it could be that you keep exposing yourself to the same toxin and it perpetuates the illness. Uh, it would be hard to know without more information, but likely one of those two causes. Now, when you take the antibiotics, what happens is that not only does it kill those bacteria in your throat, but it kills bacteria everywhere in your body. And uh, this, this can cause major disruption to your normal function because the bacteria is actually the biggest part of your immune system. And it has many, many integral functions in your body uh, to cooperate with your own cells. So, but since you wipe out all the bacteria in your throat and they were secreting chemicals that were causing the symptoms like the swelling relief from the symptoms, 
But what you've also done is you've prohibited your body from completing the healing process. So this puts you at risk to get uh, another uh, strep throat infection. Uh, not necessarily, you know, it's not a guarantee, but it, your, your risk is now higher because of that. So hopefully that explains everything. Uh, I, I've heard you explain that before, but it makes more sense every time I hear it. So that's helpful. Let me, real quick, I, I wanted to bring this up before we even went live, but Days of Noah sent a, uh, a scientific paper, I guess, from South Korea, I believe, that said that they isolated the COVID virus, and I forwarded that to you. That's a fraud, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, that's the, that's the paper that is the first paper where they wrote in the introduction section, too, that, um, that the, the uh, SARS-CoV-2 virus caused the respiratory illness. And they basically they put a reference there, but if you look at that reference, that reference doesn't say that at all. And so they essentially just fabricated that causal relationship. And from that point, it's been carried forward and claimed by everyone, basically. And it provides the justification for all the policies, like you know wearing masks and social distancing, because those are to prevent a virus. But actually, the virus has not been caused uh, shown to cause any disease and hasn't even been identified properly. And that paper also follows the same exact procedure as all the other papers, so it didn't actually isolate a virus um, at all. All right, cool. Yeah, I think I think he uh, he figured that out, and I actually think I I preempt I said I'd forward it to you, but I preempted it with I thought that I had already heard that that was a hoax. Shockingly enough, but. It, it, well, you know, Richie, I, I tell you, I've looked at dozens of uh, papers that claim to isolate a new virus, and every time they do the same exact thing. They they just mix some body fluid or source of, of alleged virus with a bunch of cells and culture and a bunch of toxic chemicals, and then they say a few days later there's cell damage, and they're like, look, there's the evidence of the virus. And uh, it's, you know... I swear, if you, you know, if we, if we got down and we had a million dollars to buy some lab equipment, I, I could create a virus from you, I guarantee. You just give me some of your snot, and I'll do the same procedures, and uh, I'll be able to in a couple of weeks. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. That was sarcasm, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> FYI. Um, I did have one. I already know the answer, but... A huge question that keeps going through the comment section is, are the effects of vaccines reversible? I know that that's, that's a very, very general, autism. like all vaccines. Yeah. Is it possible to back up the effects? Because I know the HPV by, uh, vaccine caused a lot of damage in young women. Is that accurate? Absolutely. Um, so, you know, there seem to be certain vaccines that cause more problems than others are certain types of problems like the hepatitis b vaccine for example is associated with like sudden death and uh encephalitis right and um, the flu vaccine is associated with guillain barre syndrome which is a type of paralysis right so we see measles uh, mmr vaccine seems to be associated with autism so we see slightly different effects from the different ingredients in the vaccine um so it I can't generalize completely, but I would have to say that it's very, very difficult to um, treat or mitigate all of the effects. And a big reason for this is because one of the main toxicities from vaccines is the aluminum and perhaps mercury as well. But mercury is not in that many vaccines anymore. But our bodies were either not designed or didn't evolve, depending on which orientation you come from to deal with metals because they're not really present in the normal environment. They've only been um, present in our environment since they've done like mi deep mining under the ground, right? So if it's things like aluminum, we're not really present in the environment. So our bodies don't have a good way of dealing with it. We, we do have a good way of dealing with all the normal toxins that we expect to find in our environment, but we don't have it for these heavy metals like aluminum. So I think this is the reason why it really causes so many problems and it's so misunderstood of how it affects the body. And it's really, really difficult to detox it all out and repair all the damage. So it's much, much safer to not get a vaccine. Um, but I do, you know, this is one of the areas that I try to focus on in my consultation practice because there are a lot of uh, people, mostly parents out there who, you know, 
they didn't have all the facts um, when they vaccinated their children and um, their children got really hurt by it. And uh, so I'm trying to work with those people and help them, but it's, uh, it's very challenging. There's, uh, there's no easy answers and there's no guarantees. It must be heartbreaking working with these, these parents because you bring your child in to get the vaccinations like you're told to do, no big deal. And then they give them the vaccination and everything changes. And if you have the nerve to speak up to the medical community, you're a conspiracy theorist. I can't even imagine going through that, Dr. Koff. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, all. It's, it's very difficult. And, you know, even I vaccinated my children when they were younger because I didn't, I, I mean, I have a lot of regret about this. That's why these kids have, all, all have autism growing up now. You know, damn vaccines destroying your body, man, destroying your children's body. But and thank God they're OK. But, um, you know, I can see how you can make this mistake. But I want to say, you know, anyone listening to the show, you don't have that excuse anymore. Right. So if you're if you have children or you have to make decisions for yourself, you know, now the real information or, you know, at least my opinion on it. And you can uh, find out for yourself. Uh, you know, I always encourage people don't don't just listen to my opinion. Like, I want you to go and look at the information and do your own research and make your own opinion. And um, just lock your family after answer that call. Vaccination, vaccine is supposed to work as medicine. Medicine is here to heal, not cause illness. Case closed. Gun. Psalms 104 tells you that the Lord created the herbs off the earth as meat to heal our bodies, man. You know? You shall not make any cuttings in your flesh for the dead, nor print any marks upon you, for I am the Lord. Exactly, man. Those vaccinations, anything you put inside your body with a shot of vaccination destroying your body, man. You know? Hey man, this is this is this is the information age, man. You know the days of being stupid is over with, man. The days of being stupid is over with, man. I'm, I'm pretty confident if you do that. Con Exodus 23 and 2, thou shalt not follow a multitude to do evil. Neither shalt thou speak in the cause to decline after many to rest judgment. And yo, here it is, the majority of people, they're gonna take that vaccination, they're gonna take that chip. That's gonna be evil, man. World War III is about to pop off con. Wickedness is at an all time high, and it's all coming out. Why? Because we're in the time of judgment, man. Before the Lord brings down an empire and judges the empire, he exposes it, man. That's why you have all this exposure on these devils, on these wicked elites, man. For vaccines, you'll, you'll agree with me. Uh, because I, I think, you know, it's, it's like someone said to me that people don't leave Western medicine and then come back to it later, right? And it's the same thing, you know, people don't go from uh not having a vaccine to deciding it's a good idea it just doesn't happen because once they look at the information they realize it's not a good thing and then they go away from it and so you know say that everyone should make sure that they have looked at it themselves um so that you don't have to ask the question of <laughs> you know how do you heal from the problems later on somebody put noah was a conspiracy theorist until it rained Cun. just avoid the problems from the beginning it's crazy. I was I was typing in Lucifer A's while you were talking, and I pulled up the science alert from December. This is the same one where I was reading this before any of this happened, and the only conclusion I could draw is the only reason they would want an invisible quantum quantum dot tattoo to tell who's been vaccinated is if they planned on pulling off a pandemic, and then lo and behold, <laughs> they did. I mean, what are the odds, man? You know what I mean? Yeah. One of the questions, I don't know I don't know if anybody's emailed this to you. I know you're trying to go through a list and I keep sidetracking you, but what do you think their what do you think their goal with the vaccine is? Let's go let's go all conspiratorial here. <laughs> well, you know, this is uh, this is really just a hypothesis on my part. I mean, I think one thing is really likely is infertility. Um, they want to shrink the population, and um, that would be one way to do it. Um, I think the other possibility is related to uh, this VMAT2 gene, where there was, um, a, I think it was a Pentagon uh, lecture that was leaked in 2005, 
where they were talking about a vaccine to suppress expression of this gene called BMAT2 that's associated with people having strong religious beliefs or being what they call religious extremists, like equating that with terrorism. So, you know, the idea they talked about there was like basically vaccinating a whole Muslim country in order to suppress. Yeah, exactly what they call the prophets, terrorists, treason. They charge law with treason, terrorists. They call Noah conspiracy theorists. They always call the prophets conspiracy theorists, man. Until the most high brought judgment upon the ass. A few terrorists. But I think that, you know, people having spiritual and religious beliefs, um, strong ones like we do, tend to be much more resistant to going along with uh, state-sponsored dogma and policies, especially when they conflict with the laws of God and nature. And uh, I think that it would be uh, a way for them to get even more control, uh, be to suppress that aspect of us physically, if, if it were even possible. It's crazy, but there it is. I mean, I, what, it, it astounds me how well Americans, and I guess the world, but I'm going to speak for Americans because that's who I speak to predominantly. It's amazing how people are not freaked out by the fact that they need to contact trace you. We need to, we need to know everywhere you go for the rest of your yeah. life because of this COVID-19. Even though most of us have been alive for half a century, we've never seen a thing like this before. Here it is. We still don't see it out in the wild. I mean, unless you turn on the mainstream news, but we need to know every person that you're with at all times from now on, you know? period. It's new normal. That's it. I mean, did you ever see, you ever think you'd see something like this in your lifetime? Well, uh, I, you know, I definitely saw that this more of the spying was coming because that's basically what devices like Alexa and Siri are all about. Mm -hmm. Right. So I'm not surprised about that. Now, did I think it would play out as a health crisis like this? No, that that was definitely not uh, exactly how I would have predicted it. But but now looking back, there's plenty of evidence to show, you know, that this is uh, was a, a big plan, you know, that they had because there's so many documents and events that they had where they spell out all of these things. But, you know, I think I think it's a simple equation that if people are in fear of getting sick, then it then they are willing to give up their privacy rights to be tracked. Right. It's just like with 9-11. Uh, people were afraid that terrorists are going to come and ta attack us in our homes. So they're willing to give up some rights to Rich. take off their shoes at the airport, right? To, um, uh, you know. Look up Richie from Boston, you know. I'll put the link on the channel. Be strip searched if need be. And uh, because of that security concern and that, you know, that's the, it's the problem reaction solution, right? The reaction has to be fear. And then there's the solution, right? To alleviate the fear, well, make sure you don't go around anyone else with the illness. But really, it's not about that at all. It's about knowing everything about it. Knowing everything about it. Knowing everything about it. about knowing everything about us so that they can control our behavior. It's amazing, too, that the only good effect of having this unbelievable pandemic that's been gripping the world for six months is terrorism stopped. Terrorists no longer want to blow themselves up and kill other people because they don't want to catch COVID-19. So the that's the stopped. bright side. And the well, is, it, is that the real reason or is it because uh, the U.S. told them to stop? Well, the U.S. They're, they're paying them probably, right? Of course, well, they're, they're busy right now. There's no, there's they're no mercenaries, mercenaries, contract killers. There's no more school shootings. There's no more mass shootings. There's no more terrorism because they're working on this one, one thing right now. They got a lot of balls in the air right now. So, all right, you got time for one more? Yeah, of course. All right. Do you want me to go with the one on my page, or you got one for me? No, no, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, I just got one more from uh, Mike. And it said, uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Could you have Dr. Kaufman take a look at this crazy internal Amazon email I got? I work nights at an Amazon warehouse in Massachusetts, and they sent this bonkers crap to me. Uh, why would anybody say this? 
So this is a uh, quite an interesting and unusual question, and uh, you know I wish we had Mike um, uh, available to ask him a little bit more about his experience at Amazon and what it's uh, been like through this pandemic. But nonetheless, he was sent uh, looks like a text message saying uh, titled "5G does not spread COVID," and it was uh, some wording instructing the employees not to worry about 5G, but that COVID spread through respiratory secretions and, and such, like they say. Amazon sent one of their, or they sent a mass text to all their employees saying this? That That's the implication. Uh, that's how I interpret it, yeah. Wow, wow. So, I'll tell so, you what, I'll tell you what. 5G, we, we covered this, every channel covered this coming up to, you know, the, the last year, 5G, 5G. Uh, the guys that understand it, the guys that put it in, blah, 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 they said it all works as a big system, like a great big net. So they're putting it up, they're putting it up. When it all goes on, it all goes on, and it's going to cause exactly what people are thinking is COVID now. I don't even know if I said that correctly, but I'll tell you what, driving across the country, everything shut down. The only thing that they were doing, the only essential work that you could see absolutely everywhere was installing 5G towers and 5G type apparatus, as well as signs on the side of the road. So the government can give you helpful instructions. Like in Massachusetts, there's signs all over the Massachusetts Turnpike that say practice social distancing and vehicle distancing. Because you don't want to get your car to get too close to another car because you could somehow get sick. But- <laughs> What, the car is gonna get sick? I don't know. I don't. Why not? If you've already got them social distancing, why not get them vehicle distancing? Why not get them? You know, they're going to just keep right. pushing, pushing. Because well, you want a clear GPS signal, so you don't want anyone's phone too close. Right, 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 right. It's we're we're, we're in for we're. Oh, in. Man, the scriptures say the earth is given to the hand of the wicked, man. You know, we at the end of this thing. Stupidity's at an all time high. It's time to wake up, man. Look up the information. See what's going on, man. You know. We have the end of this thing, man. Wake the fuck up. But as Richie from Boston, man, he puts up good information. You know, and during the day, I've been watching a couple of the testimonies from doctors bringing it out, man. Look, man, we have the end of this thing, man. You know, but stay strong. I'm giving all praises to you. How about you, shy. Keep looking up information, man. You know, study to show that self-approved, man. And open your damn eyes. You know, stay strong. Shalom.